Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. This is a customized 1998 Ford Ranger XLT, and it has the bigger of the V6s in it, and a five-speed Selectomatic. I've got only tonight to get this truck ready to run 60 laps around a 3 8 oval racetrack in Bradenton, Florida, at the Freedom Factory with 39 other Ford Rangers. Let's dig in. Let's face it, fellas, men are really good at losing things like keys, your wallet, your mind, according to your wife. Remember that one thing that you were gonna hide so you can definitely find it later? Nope, that's gone for good. Also, two out of three men over the age of 35, which is 76.28% of you watching right now, experience some sort of male pattern baldness. Oofta. Best thing to do is do something while you still can, and that's why I'm here to tell you about Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. With online doctor consultations with a real doctor, automated shipping and delivery to your home, constant access to your doctor through online messaging, and can't be any easier, fellers. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend a hair loss treatment plan for you, and then it automatically just ships to you every three months. That's great because it keeps you in the shop with the wrenches turning, saves time from scooting into town, and let's face it, some men just don't like going to the doctor. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no. Keeps is very affordable because they offer generic versions of the FDA approved medications for hair loss treatment, which saves you a ton of money and keeps change in your pocket. Keep them parts going for your rig, you know? If you're ready to take action on preventing hair loss, just click the link down in the description there takes you to keeps.com forward slash vice and you'll get 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com forward slash vice. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and thank you for being patient and listening. This helps us continue to bring you free content. Now let's get back to this Ford Ranger full of danger. Guy got invited to the Danger Ranger 5000. Yep, doing that. There's quite a few rules, which is great. They're all designed to keep a guy safer-ish ish but none that say there's a max engine or a certain engine or transmission that you can use. So pretty much everybody involved scoured the internet and found and bought all of the four liter five speed pickups out there. It's basically the best combination you can get in a Ford Ranger that I'm aware of without doing a swap and whatnot. Well, I did the same. I searched Minnesota, Wisconsin, Eastern North and South Dakota. I mean, big area. And the only one I found at the time for sale that seemed to be a running, driving pickup was this unit back here. Well, when I went to get this thing, I brought the tray more, you know, because I expected to haul it home. And I pulled up to this rather pristine 98 Ranger that has won car shows, that is fully documented. I think I'm the third owner. Someone has customized it. It's a nice rig. And I got to be honest, full disclosure, it pains me all the way down to the soul to put this thing in danger of being beaten up or dented or completely wrecked. And I'm gonna do my best not to do that. Might even change a guy's whole race strategy or I'll just swerve around in the back, stay out of the traffic and eat some chips. I don't know. Bottom line is I really don't wanna wreck this thing, but I need to come race ready. And this is the only option I got. In fact, it needs to be on the trailer late tonight or super early in the morning because I've got like a 12 or 13 hour drive to Bradenton, Florida to get this thing to the Danger Ranger. I'll give you a little tour of this gem. Now the very first thing a guy did when I picked this rig up was I ran it over to my buddy Andy's house and had him put in a roll cage for me, but with some specific directions, which is make it where a guy can get in and out for like a daily driver scenario. And I also wanted it bolt in so a guy can completely remove the thing because again, my intentions are put this thing back on the street, hopefully if things go well. It also has seats already in it, which is great because of the short window I have to get this truck ready. That was another perk buying this thing. But let's take a close look here. Right away, you probably notice the net here. Again, this is made to just, you unbolt it and it snips right off. This is actually the window net 
out of the 777 and Andy installed it correctly. This isn't just self tap to the door or anything like that. It actually has nice tabs here and over here that fit fantastic. Look at this cage he put in. It's absolutely beautiful. The band that follows the seat, plenty of elbow room, but it's still gonna come across the midsection here. Nice bend here, really tight up to the headliner. And the best part, the whole thing can just unbolt and come right out of the truck, which is great. Gotta take the doors off, but you know, that's minor detail. Fasten the Furious interior. Look at this blue. It just hits you right in the teeth. Of course, it's chipping and flaking, but very 90s kind of custom build-ish. Also has the AutoZone pedals down here and stuff like that. Feller did say that he put in some sort of fancy 48 triple disc lightning fire clutch. I don't know. It's really grabby and jerky. Shift light that doesn't work. You got some JC Whitney white gauge overlay things. Again, the five speed. This has a boom boom stereo system. They even put in a custom rear sliding window, which does operate. I don't have the key, you know, turned on over there. And the rumor is, and I can actually confirm it with the paperwork, the original owner of this truck was the owner of a dealership owner or son of the owner i can't remember anyway when they ordered this thing they just went yep 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 down the whole checkbox basically so we've got even crews with the manual and all of the other goodies air conditioning blows cold power everything neat little truck for sure these are simpson belts that i had andy put in when he did the cage these are the cam lock style and what that is, is to get out, all you have to do is just twist these and it just blows everything apart instead of the old latch style. So we use these in the Freedom Hawk because it's what Alex liked to use or was comfortable with. I've always used the latch my entire life, but these are really neat and I'll probably switch to that style belt. Unfortunately, I tried to use this seat, but when a guy sits in here, well, I'll just show you. You know, it's just, it's not, there's a, there's a height problem with the seat. So that's one thing, you know, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to work on the seat. So I got a different flavor and the plan is just to put that all the way down to the floor, bolt it in. We're gonna keep this seat though, because again, I'm gonna put it back in so we have a matching set. Body-wise, not a speck of rust on this truck absolutely anywhere. And I ain't kidding you. Well, I take that back. There's some rust here, okay? All right, a little bit over here too I didn't know about. But I mean the body, anyway, looking pretty good. There's like none scratches anywhere, I don't think. It's got one of these here coats coming off in this got one of these magical covers got the original wheels I'm assuming that's what that is and it also came with two slicks I don't know if the guy was trying to drag race it or what here's where it came from Seabald motor sales and Ford and it had all the warranties and everything like that I think it's got hundred and nineteen thousand miles right now has Mustang wheels on it but what we're gonna do today is try to set this thing up for asphalt oval so basically it's got to turn left and then turn left and left and then at the end you turn left again so we got to set it up to turn left and then we need some grippage so i bought these to take to the hoopty challenge for the freedom hawk and we ended up not using them at all so i had them laying around i just picked up different wheels and the plan is to put these. These are D800 Hoosiers. They're kind of a middle to hard compound. I wish I had a little bit softer compound for that track down there. See there, they're 8.265 to 15 D800s. But I wish I had a little bit softer compound, but I already had these and I don't want to waste them. 
So I mean, they'll probably do decent-ish. We're gonna do a little bit of work on the front end, see if we can doll up the suspension over here so when we're dipping into them corners. Thankfully, for whatever reason, look at the alignment on this thing. The camber is horrible for daily driving, about absolutely perfect for circle track racing. So that's good, it's ready to go. Again, under the hood here is that massive four liter V6 pumping out 78 horsepower. Maybe it was 80, I'm not sure. Looks to be in really decent condition. Someone's upgraded the lightning hoses and a couple other things. I'll bring it in here. Boom, boom. That's not right. That's pretty much perfect. You know, if I was smart, I would have bought a snake winder belt and replaced that now because that runs the WP and the PS pump, but you know, I didn't. Anywho, we got new clamp laters with the biscuit dues on both sides with what looks to be, whoa, brand, brand new battery. That's neat. Probably put in right before I bought it, which means the charger whirler doesn't work. That's fine. Big old lightning hoses. Them look like garden hoses for Pete's sake. And then someone did the right thing and put a $7 spec tray filter right onto the factory housing just left all this you know in place but other than that it's completely stock which is good because one of the rules is the engine has to remain completely stock from the actual throttle body to the end of the exhaust manifold meaning you can have a cold air intake and if you want to cut the exhaust off you can go ahead and do that now I've seen on the interwebs there's some folks dyno tuning these they're putting chips in them and tuners and they're basically blatantly breaking the rules, but not me. I'm gonna leave this thing just like this. It's probably not very likely we're gonna place, say, in the top 10, but if a guy does, I want it to be legitimate following the rules, so we're not gonna to touch anything. In fact, I probably won't even change on the Earl. Where did the, oh, what is this? Can't be. Well, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Oh, it is. That's definitely custom there. It's got Earl in it. So, I mean, I think we'll even just leave that be as well. Well, how does that, whatever. It does have exhaust on it. It's obnoxious. Where is the tip? You know, it's got that fast and furious sound. There it is. I'm pretty positive it still has the cat on it. Let's see if we could see that. I don't know. Yeah, right there. So that hasn't been cut off yet. That's pretty surprising. Other than that, oh, it's just straight piped. No wonder it sounds like a two longer lawnmower running on one, huh? But anyway, I think where we're gonna start is right with that seat. I know it runs, I know it drives. Well, on and off a trailer anyway. I've never even grabbed second, but we'll wait until race day for that. We're gonna start with the seat because I have to fit in this darn thing. So we'll get this seat out, we'll get that other seat in, and then I think we'll dig into this suspension over here. We've got a lot of adjustments to make on this side to help make this thing turn left. Well, I've been scanning the papers on how the seat is held in here, and there seems to be some sort of homemade Majigama Bob here hooked up to some doohickey jammed into some seat holder downer 300s. I'm not, I don't know, basically. And I found these in the truck, the old seat adjuster 200s, which is just a bent piece of steel. Apparently the spring and wire underneath the seat to get them to slide. That's gone, and you know, you, yeah, that's garbage, basically. So what I'm gonna do, I think is get in here and take off the bolts that hold the seat to the first homemade thing and then we can maybe see a little bit better to what's underneath that and then we can get the T50s into the must be the original seat bolts try to get the whole thing out of here well now the bottom one's spinning well, what about the top now if that does it too I just don't believe this how do you even get anything in there 
to take that off. What about underneath this? Can the whole darn seat, can this come out? Can this, can we move this off? How is this bolted in? Or does that have studs? So I gotta take that off first. I might just have to just squeeze in here. <laughs> Great. 17 months and one first aid kit later. Got the seat forward. That was easy. Basically the old seat adjuster. You gotta jam this in here. Somehow catch this lever. Stick this into your chest until it bleeds. Lean over the seat. Jam the other one in here. Hook your arm around here and beat on this. And then it'll move forward about a sixteenth of an inch at a time. And, you know, later down the road, we got it forward. Fortunately, I can't even get to that one yet. How do you get to it? The answer is you just don't, okay? I can get this one out, that one, that one, and then maybe we'll just keep rocking it back and forth until it snaps off or something. And then the other seat, you know, three bolts, That's that should be fine. So now I'm gonna go try to find a T50. That'll take me another hour. And we'll see if we can get these three out. Maybe I can get a vice grip on that and just I got these three bolt trays out in, you know, 22.1 seconds. But this guy here, with the best tool in the world, just a little bit at a time. It'll be another, you know, 40 minutes before this bolt comes out. Luckily, I didn't spend the money to get matching seats, so this is the only one we've got to deal with. And I'm thinking on the other ones, I'll show you in a minute the seats I got, but they're aluminium. We're just going to plop them on the floor and I'm just going to take the drill and boom, 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 and then, you know. So this situation goes away. We'll probably be putting our own provisions in here and whatnot. Okay, back to this. Yeah, yeah. come on now. How does this, can this come out? Oh, whoops. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't know if you know this, but I'm basically a Sasquatch, so I don't fit into regular seats. So basically, any time that I want to go on a racing, I gotta order a custom seat for width and height. And Summit Racing has a really affordable brand that I usually pick up, and they even have a danged old cover for it. And this guy here, there we go. See. Full of them stink bugs. Look how wide that bad boy is. Let's test it. Boop. Yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> Gently took the seat bracket off. Maybe I could use it. Problem is, this must have been a cold snack order. I got a Rosie O'Donnell size one instead of the regular 20 inch. I don't know what that is. All of it button. I mean, it's from the door halfway across the transmission hump. Kind of defeats the purpose. The reason I wanted this seat is when you're in a circle track situation, your body slides. And it's a whole lot of effort to keep your body in position. Like in them Crown Vicks, you just gotta put your arm across and one hand it. This here, I got, geez, this much space in here. So I might have to just pre-slide my body over. But anywho, the issue is with the hump, the seat being literally on the hump, I needed this bracketry to get this side up. I sat in it, and as you can see here, the bottom of this pan is considerably lower than that one still. So when I sit in it, if you could put basically two fingers above your head, that's your helmet. And I got just enough room, but it sits back a little too far. I might have to keep my head crooked forward because it's probably gonna be hitting the bar up there a little bit. But now I just got to drill some marks in here get the seat bolted to this bracketry. Give you an idea of what I'm doing here is banging a hole out. There's one, I gotta get you know one back here yet. This side's done. Ignore these fellers, you know, I, I sneezed and <laughs> you know, that's, that's what that was. And we're gonna do the same thing we got going on here is hardware through this, but it's also gonna be going through the seat. See what I'm saying? And then we'll re-slide her on 
put it back in, pretend we put that bolt in, maybe reach this one, and definitely put those two in. Seat's done, just wanted to show you how cattywampus this is. But we're just gonna have to roll with it at this point. I'm gonna plop her back down. I think I have a system figured out where I can hopefully get this belt back under that because I need it for the strapalizationals. Otherwise I have to make another hole. And if all goes well, this should go back together pretty quickly. Get in there. Yeah, like that. I think so. Yeah. There we go. Slip this on. Boy, I really got this tight in here. Measure 14 times, drill six. You know, I think that's what they say. And then, can a guy get these belts in before things get a little too hairy? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Did this one? Is that in? Wow. Are we twisted? What do we got? Why is it doing that back here? Well, for crying in the mud, unorthodox practice over here. Swing the extra over the back. On the tails you get on these, just roll them up and zip tie them. In the back, they're out of the way. Ooh, these got buttons on them. Don't be dipped. And they're working. No. You probably can see I've got this chair leaned way farther back. And then, of course, it's lower. And that's how I like to drive is kind of a back position. Guy wants his arms you know when you're running this to just be hanging so you're not too close you don't want to be way out here because that's exhausting you just want them to hang you know and that's about right where it is for me in fact i'll jump in here in a second try this thing on for size well how many buttons we got there we go oh yeah beep, beep, beep. no we'll never hit third it's probably going to be second wide open the whole time maybe third we'll see i don't know what the rear end ratio is is what i'm saying to you wish it was a little bit more this way but this roll bar is in the way i can't get it over anymore but i got plenty of room up here now so good to go seat that's done how do you get out i don't know like this maybe Moving on to the suspension here. This is gonna be a really fun race for you guys to watch. There's 35 drivers that I don't know. Pretty much nobody knows. Some of them might have a little bit of experience. Some are probably really great. And majority probably never even stepped on a 3 8 oval. So it's gonna be a wild time out there and it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. But I think no matter how much any of us try to set these trucks up, I'm predicting that you're gonna see a lot of slide outs and sliding in general because it's a pickup. It's really light in the rear and really heavy in the front. There's just nothing we can do about that. And in my experience and personal opinion, all of that comes down to the front right in most cases, whether you're gonna be understeering or oversteering and that's where if you turn, does it just plow right through it and you know, not turn? Or when you try to turn, does it turn too much? Brings the guy around. Well, a huge majority of that is done in the front and specifically the right front. Now in dirt track racing, for example, that's done with spring rate, ride height, wheel spacers, wheel offset, tire pressure, camber, things like that. We're not gonna get that crazy. My goal is to bring the right front up just a little bit, stiffen the ride. Now the correct way to do that on this particular application is to get a taller coil spring, probably a different spring rate there as well, and then like a double adjustable shock, give us some adjustments up here. So I'm gonna do the right thing and put in some twistle lift 200s. You know, that's good for one inch about. And if that's not enough, then we're gonna move on to the death spacers. Had really good luck with these. We're gonna to try to get this right front as high as we possibly can. So when we're coming into that corner, what we're doing is setting up our right front. Most people like to come in and just dynamite the brakes and then let it come over like this. I don't do that because 
number one, it's hard on your brakes, and it's actually slower to come in really fast, pound the brakes, and then try to accelerate out. I like to just graze the brakes and use the steering, quick left, right, to set the vehicle over. And I want that right front stiff. If it starts rolling like this, that's when we're gonna get you know, the tires upset and we get sliding around. Hopefully if I can get it rolled over, it's nice and stiff up front and we can hold some more speed around that corner. Sounds really cool. Definitely not gonna happen. Perfect. A couple things I noticed here. Up on the tag, it just had an oil change, which is fantastic. But I am gonna pop in some of this here. Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer. I don't know, it's got a checkered flag. It's just high performance. That'll help us win maybe. And also when I jammed this jack under here with the wrong handle, it barely works. I noticed here on the sway bar, we got a new end link section and bushings. So she's been dialed in. I also noticed there's a power steering cooler on here already. I'll be dipped. For whatever reason, there's only one brand new lug over here. If I had to guess, the last feller snapped one off putting on these crowd smasher wheels. But just like having five kids, you hope that at least one is decent. Guts. What are these anyway? Lion sports. They got a lot of tread left. Maybe we should just run them. I think I will bring them actually for extras. Uh-oh, oil leak. Yeah, we'll ignore that. I'm trying to get all the safeties in here and you're not fitting. Do I have, is there anything, anything cool in here? To, what am I looking at? Well, I couldn't get these to fit in there. These were good for like a A-body GM rear springs because the coil spacing is much taller. But basically you'd put these in, twist this nut up, and that would raise this and spread the coils out like that. And these are dangerous, but I did test them by putting them in the front end of a Firebird and then jumping it three feet in the air at 65 and they did not come out. So that's good to know. I went with the twist lifts and these feel really wrong. And I mean worse than using steak sauce, but it's where we're at, gentlemen. Now when we compress this, basically, this is gonna stay in the way, obviously, so it gives it about a one inch lift, something like that. And then whoever did the ligament on this has the front rolled in, so the top of the tire is tilted in, which is what we want, because when the truck is rolling, we want this tire to come up and stand to where all of the tread is on the ground, like that. Now I need to decide whether or not I wanna put a spacer on the front. The wider stance we can get, the better for it. The downside to that is, I'm gonna throw this tire on here quick. And the back spacing I chose is already gonna kick the wheel out. And although it handles a little bit better, it's a lot dangerous to cut a tire. You don't wanna lose a steer tire, especially. You'll see these stock wheels, they're pretty well tucked in there. But let's roll this one up here. She's not bolted on yet, but that's okay. So yeah, here, I mean, they're decent-ish, but it is kicked out a little bit. I think I'm gonna throw a couple lug nuts on, set it on the ground, put some air in this tire, and then we'll take a closer look at it. We'll have to wait till we get down there to see what we're gonna run for tire P, S, and I. For now, I'll just go to 25. So well, there's the front right there. And I like how that's sitting. That's pretty good. Again, the danger though is this sticking out farther. Come into a feller's door or something like that, that sidewall is going to go really easily. So it's kind of a gamble on there. Might jack her up and put a spacer in just to see what that looks like. But I got so much going on back here in the rear. I just, I had to bring in. First of all, one new lug nut again. Some sort of weird creature sack hanging in there. Look at these welds on this tailpipe. Perfect. Rear sway bar and new bushings and it's got traction bars on it. What is going on around here? 
I don't under I don't understand it. I guess so. Rear end suspension done. We're not even gonna look at the brakes. I don't have any brake cleaner, so we can't rejuvenate them. No sense in taking that off. We'll just uh, throw another wheel on. See how that's looking. It's not even on the ground yet, and I'm not gonna lie. This is looking really cool, actually. Listen, I know your mind is already blown, but I'm about to blow your socks all the way off and halfway back on again. Guys started thinking, this has got a bunch of goodies in it. What if it's got a posi rear end? Pay attention to the rotation of these tires, fellers. Posi, it is. I mean, did I just accidentally somehow buy the perfect truck for this event? Hmm. Oh, that means I'm gonna be out on like the third lap, probably. Hmm. Isn't it amazing what a set of tires and wheels will do for a rig? Just completely transform this truck. And it's sitting good. I mean, we're gonna have plenty of clearance in here. I think I got the right size tire. I don't think we're gonna have enough sag to Yeah, we should be good. So yeah, tires and wheels set. I think what I'm gonna do next is we'll get these thrown in the back, take out all this stuff. I got a couple stools I haven't built yet and then the stockers. Get all this junk out of here and then we'll throw these in and probably even like the jack and some tools so it's ready to go and then at the track we can just unload it. I'm gonna keep the tonneau cover on you know, because of aerodynamics. I'm sure it weighs 700 pounds. would be way better with it off, but that's just the way she goes. Look at these stickers. It says nothing about smoking Chevys. And if you ain't first, you're last. It's perfect. That's all done. I made his own, you know, bed protector thingy, my bobber. There's also the original shift boot and cup holder things in there. Uh, the factory air box and stuff like that. Took the steering wheel cover off. Don't need that nonsense. Well, I think I'm gonna pop that in quick. That is the smallest filler up here. Ooh, green juice right to the top. Okay, that's fine full of ice cubes. I'd really like to give this little girl a hand wash, but I think it's like midnight or something like that. Anyway, it's dark, can't see nothing. Have to do that another day. You'll probably have to wait until I race it to see how she sparkles up, but I could tell it'll clean up nice, but it definitely needs like a buff for sure. It's been sitting outside a while. Maybe even after the race, we'll run the buff later on it. Hopefully she ain't banged up too bad, you know. I should check somehow. Might have to get Jessica out here. There's a lot of carpet underneath the gas pedal. And I'm wondering if in a guy's got his foot through the firewall, is that really full throttle out here? That would be the pits to be 80% throttle the whole race. I don't even know what level the oil's at. We're just gonna put all of this in there and assume that we're gonna be, you know, burning some at however many RPMs this will go, all of them. We're going to have all of the RPM. So this will be nice to go in there. Like I said, the oil has just changed. The guy must have changed it right before I came and picked it up. It has like 20 miles on it. If you do the maths on the sticker. So that's nice. Saved me some time and $32.98 there. Yep. There's fans up there. <laughs> Keep forgetting.
this little rig came right back around super quick. I got a couple really small things that I need to do to it. I think I'll throw a vice grip plate on it. I also have some numbers for the doors waiting for me down in Bradenton, Florida. You guys can bleep bloop your guests down below what number that is. And we might do a couple other small things here or there, but otherwise I think it's ready to go ahead and race. And don't forget, you can watch this race in person in the bleachers Saturday, October 16th. You can get your tickets in person there at the Freedom Factory, or you can go to the FOAT.com, F-O-A-T, or you can do the pay-per-view. I think you go to CletusMcFarland.com. I don't know. Googleize it, okay? You can watch it on the TV. You can watch it there in person. I'll also be running around in the stands and stuff there down in Florida meeting you guys after the race. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time. I didn't forget.